and so Seen the shooting of the guy in the motorized wheelchair. Let's see if I can see. This. Of course, the video shows about five percent of the internet. They just rolled up behind him and shot him like seven times. What are you talking about? Yeah. A bunch of officers came and killed this like 61 year old man. He was in a motorized wheelchair. Oh, very funny. Just came up behind him and <laughs> lit his ass up. <laughs> He was going into Lowe's with like a fucking knife and they were like, hey, don't go in there. <laughs> that is funny. I mean, there is zero risk to this, because we don't have any loot on us. Yeah. Oh, they don't have anything either. No. Why, what are we fighting for? Because they won't leave us the fuck alone. This is true. Why are they fighting us? They, they were on our ship, they know that we don't have anything. Uh, for the hell of this. Yeah, yes. Is this a Supreme Court justice? Hmm? Yeah, there's just a bunch of people on Twitter. Oh, Associate Justice. Yeah, my Twitter actually changed things in the world. No one gives a shit about Twitter. I kind of want to look up. And this is just annoying. Alright, 
let's just lower. Alright. We're gonna lower and uh, puddle. Like we get Where is the nearest outpost? Is it just straight? I'm heading east now. Anything to the north that I don't have to cross their path to get to? The north, we got crooked mass. We can make them head dragon. We can make them meet up with the uh, guys to the south. Cool. So LW going. Wright again given the black flag as he passes by us, and Wright has been ordered to the pit area. After falling into the pit, Wright got out of his car, slipped into the airfield, and was never seen again. It turned out that LW Wright was an How many did they take? He had conned investors out of nearly $50,000 so that he could race alongside hmm. NASCAR. Yeah, but I, I, I took all the stuff in the crates. I guess they just took uh, a crate's worth alias persists as one and dropped the other one over. record books that may always be shrouded in mystery. After letting what was essentially an average Joe mess around in a sanctioned professional sporting event, now ah, I guess we get nothing. Standards for who exactly was allowed on the track. However, while paying more scrutiny, and I'm also going to drop our tridents and dark tides overboard so they don't even get those. Well, the pace car we understand has been stolen. The uh, officials are not driving Where's this thing, and somebody has actually gone to the pace car and stole it. Just to At the Twenty-year-old Darren Crowder stole the pace car that had been left yeah, on Abu Dhabi pit road. Really had, uh, he completed a full circuit at over 100 miles per hour before the police set up a blockade and took him into custody. During the whole bewildering spectacle, the crowd of a hundred fans cheered wildly. Oh, I think we forgot to sell the Reaper's flag. It's only a grade one, but whatever. We're tossing that overboard too. After the Muscogee Indians were forced to vacate their lands, most obeyed the order and subjected themselves to the infamous trail. Mm. Some of the natives, however, uh, refused to go west to the Indian territory and instead chose to keep their destiny in their own hands. A few Muscogee turned their sights instead towards the south, in the mostly uninhabited territory of Florida. The subtropical peninsula became known as a safe haven for refugees yeah, of the expanding American Empire together with various other displaced natives and escaped African slaves, the remnants of the Muscogee would integrate into a new tribe, the Seminole. Although they too were forced to... The nigger, the nigger, the the At the very least, for the time being, they were free. In 1819, Spain ceded the Florida Territory to the United States, and concerns of relocation immediately returned. Although the Seminole briefly received a reservation on the peninsula, it wouldn't be long until the federal government once again demanded they move out west. After already sacrificing so much, the Seminole refused to budge. And after Chief Osceola shot and killed federal agent Wiley Thompson, they found themselves at war with the might of the U.S. military. As the this still impedes them. Florida, the Seminole warriors would soon we, if they just keep going wide uh, around us, they're never going to catch us. So yeah, that's a cool way to do it. The witch. I'm going to do it again. Has always been unusually favorable to underdogs. The relative ease with which drivers can navigate the track opens the door for the occasional David to contend with NASCAR's Goliaths. In addition to the fluke win of Richard Brickhouse in the inaugural race, five other drivers would score their one and only career victory in the first 20 years of competition. No, Vega, I'm in the water near the island. The track in the sport. In the early I'm back on the trip. Winning at Talladega was a matter of endurance. Completing 500 miles at the longest circuit in the sport was a daunting task for even the most dominant race teams. Putting yourself in position to win was often as simple as overcoming the attrition of your competitors. 
Eventually, most teams figured out how to make their machines go the distance, and the name of the game shifted to speed. Get back to ship. In spite of its many trials and tribulations, get back to ship. Super Speedway has always managed to draw fans for one simple reason. There's no other place on Earth. I tried to harp on a keg, so but it blew up the ship because it's cool. Tracks 33 degree corners allow drivers to maintain incredible momentum throughout the circuit. I wanted to try to keg them. The only track in all of racing where you can complete an entire lap without ever touching the brake pedal. The colossal rover is capable of producing such extreme speeds that most motorsports don't feel comfortable racing on it. In 1980, Indy Hopefully that didn't take our mass down, it was near the front. They would soon <laughs> that her mass is down, I think it's over. But, uh, so is not. Essentially <sighs> Stock cars are considerably slower than open-wheel cars, but soon enough, they too would begin approaching the danger zone. Bobby Isaac managed to break the 200 mile per hour barrier as early as 1970, but rule changes to the cars brought speeds down to the 180s for most of the decade. Gradually though, speeds began to creep back up, and in 1982, Benny Parsons would once again reach 200, becoming the first NASCAR driver to eclipse the mark in a qualifying lap. One year later, Hale Yarborough would reach 202, Surpassing Bobby Isaac's 13 year old. I do kegs sometimes explode when you harpoon them and sometimes not. Man in NASCAR history, Bill Elliott, who would qualify for the Winston 500 with a monster lap of 209 miles per hour. Elliott's car was so much faster than the competition that after a ruptured whip on the first and the pits, Elliott would overcome a five mile deficit under Green to retake the lead by the end of the race. Even after burning several minutes on pit road, Elliott had just ran the fastest race in NASCAR history, completing 500 miles in just over 2 hours and 41 minutes. Two years later, Bill Elliott would complete a 2 and 2 thirds mile lap at Talladega in under 45 seconds, setting an average speed of 212.8 miles per hour. It was yeah. at this point that the Well, that was pretty much our only chance. I doubt they're going to come near enough to the forward for us to be able to do that. Talladega, it means speed, it means competition, and speed is certainly something we've seen a lot of this weekend, Larry. Eight I turn towards the fort. ...and ten miles per hour. The identical front row as last year, Bill Elliott on the pole and Bobby Allison alongside. Bobby Allison spent a brief period as NASCAR's most popular driver, and at Talladega, the Alabama-born racing legend was always a fan favorite. On May 3rd, 1987, Bobby Allison came inches away from becoming one with the fans. Report. Bobby Allison with a horrible crash on so. the front stretch. It has torn out a complete section of protective railing. After a mechanical failure sent his car spinning down the trioval, Bobby Allison found himself in the most frightening near miss in NASCAR history. The Talladega pace had become so fast that even a slight aberration was enough to transform any of the 40 vehicles on track into a two-ton projectile. Just as everyone was starting to forget about the Talladega curse, the track would produce an incident so ominous that it would fundamentally alter the future of stock car racing. One may consider it inevitable, but the story of Talladega is most dangerous. Following Bobby Allison's this field of NASCAR it does nothing, bro. Just come back. The air to the Allison throw. Davey Allison, who scored his first career Being victory a nuisance? the awesome. day that his father yeah, cheated like dead. Army, so. Six years later, they... Awesome. That'll give us enough time to, uh, Sad note lower today. emissary and scuttle. Davey Allison died this morning after the helicopter he was piloting crashed yesterday. I think either way, we'll have enough time. Like, our ship has... Davey Allison, a great champion and a good friend of ours was 32. That is nothing. Although his life and career were cut tragically short, Davy Allison's legacy... They well, said you did nothing, their sales down. They just pulled it back up. Possibly the most yeah, influential it. single race in NASCAR history. Bill Elliott would become the last... Okay. We did nothing? Yeah, well, we got ground, and we're After going to lower race, emissary. And you can't do anything about it. 
A new component to the intake manifold designed to limit horsepower. We're just gonna anchor the ship and run aboard, run ashore, and uh change the game and spawn a racing so sensationally unique that no other motorsport in the world even comes close to replicating it. Plate racing takes traditional racing. Uh, I think it's best if we just give them absolutely it's nothing. It's a format that can allow the 30th place car to be within two seconds. Like, as far as a fight, like, they don't get anything. Rather than raw driving ability, winning a restrictor play race relies on the driver's patience. You know what? Let's just fire off the rest of our cannonball supply into the air. Spectacular displays of speed in the past. Talladega racing would now uh, for fun because they can see us. Restrictor play production. Drivers now had far less margin for error in close quarters traffic. With so many opportunities for play, All right, very soon. Very soon. Put her straight. To wreck a race car. Talladega had always been a place that pushed the limits of what was possible on an asphalt track. In the early 90s, saw a remarkable stream of accidents where drivers would test the literal limits. The 1993 Five Heart Pipe was NASCAR's first race in Talladega after the death of Davy Allison. The event would be remembered most for two harrowing incidents. On lap 69, rookie driver Stanley Smith would suffer a head-on collision into the turn on wall. Ready to anchor? Eerily occurred in the same part Actually, don't even bother anchoring. Just run ashore. Was 20 years to the day of the tragedy. Stanley Smith would manage to survive, but with run! that would end his racing career entirely. All However, that matters is we reach that Reapers. This accident is most well known for something that had not happened in a NASCAR race in a quarter century. There is one car that has gone over the wall. Nice. As you see in that, I can't yep. remember the last time we saw a car out of a speedway. Ned. No, I can't either. Jimmy Horton's number 30. Now I want to watch that chip scuttle. The, the accident compelled NASCAR to install a catch fence in the Talladega corners. The new enclosure would come in handy just three years later, as it prevented Ricky Craven's car from also exiting the circuit in a similar crash. They're rocking up. However, back in the 93 Die Hard 500, yeah, the mayhem was only Great. half over. On lap 132, Neil Bonnet's car was sent tumbling into the triable catch fence. Thankfully, after Bobby Allison's accident, NASCAR had strongly reinforced the line between the spectators and the action, narrowly escaping yet another tragedy. While it came very close, a guy off? this Die Hard 500 did not live up to its moniker. The event would go on to be remembered as the race where cars seemingly refused to stay inside the track. The next time the Yo, why did you just do that? Why Cry about, about it. We discovered the true meaning of Cry about it. inside the track. Cry about it. Once again, no, that's not me. That's a... would have to make some out of Yeah, that was a barrel, you see. Talladega has the strange ability to All send right, awesome. cars in seemingly any direction. In a few cases, that direction would be up. <laughs> Why did you just do that? Why did you just do that? Very funny. Molding. They chased us all that way for absolutely one nothing. The ethereal moments that any racing fan can witness. We all know cars as some of the heaviest objects we interact with on a regular basis. Oh, Most of us would me. have to you use all of our strength me. to get them to budge a single inch. And to think that something as light as air could be powerful enough to lift nothing. a two-ton machine off the earth. You wish I could. <laughs> Why did you just do that? Why did you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> They're 